What's up guys? Um, so basically, I'm going to give you guys an overview of all the early game heroes and basically how to use them, what good heroes there are. Uh, I'm only doing this early game. Well, maybe I'll do one for later. Depends. But uh, basically, early game, you don't have that good of a grasp of the game, so I feel like I can give some pretty good pointers, and later on, you should be able to use your own judgment. So without further ado, let's get started. So first off, the first thing you need to know, I'm not going to be touching the URs. I'm going to be ignoring them for now. I shall talk each of them very briefly, just say what they do or whatever. But this is because URs take a bunch of resources to invest in, so I recommend you just ignore them for the early game. Let's see, Nobunaga, okay. Um, there might be ones I missed, but, okay, Typhon, but we'll leave it at that. If I see another UR, I'll just put them in. So Lucifer, this guy right here, he has lifesteal, dodges, he's a DPS, and he is good in PvP. A Madarasu. A Madarasu is one of the best PvP heroes. She can reflect damage under her and she does very high damage with her auto attacks. Uh, Nua. Nua just buffs your team. Uh, she's a support. Prometheus just deals a ton of damage. He's a mage. Lilith is another mage. She nukes your team, the enemy team. Dangan gives a bunch of random buffs and can help you spam active skills. Marduk is a tank, but he's actually a DPS in a trench coat because he uh, basically assassinates people when they're low and he can chain kill your entire team. Nobunaga, he just does a load of AoE damage, just like Prometheus, and he has a bit of survivability too. And Typhon basically tanks for your team and revives them as snakes when they die. Alright, so now that we've got that over with, um, I'm going to be talking about the SSRs, so uh, excuse the barking noises if you can hear them, neighbor's dog. Anyways, so the SSRs, how I'm going to be basically talking about them is um, how they do to help you progress in campaign to get you all the unlocks. It's very different from late game campaign because late game is like more consistent damage, but the early game is like burst, 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 you know, burst the enemies down and then get your unlocks as soon as possible and I'm gonna also be considering PvP uh, no champions arena no void invader those are a little more advanced um, but yeah without further ado let's get started so Zeus um, Zeus is the first SSR you will get and he's surprisingly good for the first SSR like many games in the beginning you're gonna get some trash some trash like beginner, I don't know, beginner hero or something. But he's actually pretty okay. Early game, I would not say he's the best. I'll put him B tier for now. He does a lot of AoE damage and he's a nuker. He is very fragile though. So he's definitely not the best. And there are a couple uh there are a couple heroes that outshine him. Athena. Athena, uh she is a really, really good tank. Uh, in early game, however, the most important heroes are, um, are your carry, okay? So you're, like, the hero that you're using, uh, for your DPS, and who's supposed to carry you through the game, your highest level hero. You're supposed to level them, uh, 20 to 40 levels higher than the rest of your team, and she is not a carry, so that's why I'm putting her in A tier, but she is very good, she can keep your team alive. Uh, she can reduce damage done to her to 1 for a very small period of time. It can activate every 8 seconds. Uh, she can block damage for 2.5 seconds or reduce them to 1. She can do healing. She can heal your team, stun enemies. She's overall a very good tank. Alright, Suzanu. Suzanu, okay, so um, right here, uh, before level 181, he's actually pretty mid. So I'm going to take points off, but he's such a good carry that he's still probably going to pretty high A tier. Um, he basically, he is the premier assassin in this game. He is, uh, he deals very high single target damage. Uh, he is very squishy in the beginning, so you got to watch out for that. But uh, he can, you know, 
link to the back line. So he basically, the person opposite of him in the formation, he'll like teleport to, deal massive damage, and then stun. So he's overall a great carry to invest in if you like to, but please note that, you know, uh, before all his skills are maxed out, like unlocked, uh, he will not be as effective as he could be. So that's why I'm not putting him in S tier. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put like a force build, like near force build tier for like all the uh, all the I'll say like SS all the heroes I think are like broken, like downright busted. All right. Artemis. Artemis, I'm going to plop her into B tier as well. I'm going to put her above Zeus. She does burst damage, and later game campaign, she does fall off because burst damage is not the way to go later on. Uh, it's more consistent, and but in PvP, she's great because she does burst damage again. Uh, she's very, very squishy, so you got to find a way to keep her alive or she's going to die on you real quick. And... Uh, she, yeah, she does long-range burst damage. That's really all, all there is to her. She does a lot of burst damage to, to, to enemies from long range. So if you like that, cool. All right, Dionysus. Oh, yeah, we have a special tier for this guy. This guy this guy's interesting. Um, he's dog shit. Uh, he's pretty good for boss fights, but... For PvP and campaign, you should you should never use this guy. Just pre if you get like a bunch of copies of him, just pretend he doesn't exist. Do not build him. All right, Thor, the God of Thunder. Ooh, 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 wow. Thor. Ooh, ooh, okay. Thor. Thor is just trash. Thor is a tank. He. He's pretty decently tanking. He is a walking sack of health. He doesn't do anything. Like, he just sits there. He lasts for a while. And then he eventually dies, and he brings your team nothing. He's going D tier. Western Queen. Western Queen. Western Queen. This might be a little bit of a hot take. Actually, not really. I think many people have realized her value. She's going to SS tier. She is near force build. Alright, so... um. Her passive basically strengthens your carry. So no matter what carry you're using, she will make them stronger. And her ultimate does that as well. She will basically give your carry steroids. Like they will they will be very powerful once her ultimate is activated. Aside from that, she does some decent healing. Her by herself, she's really weak, but she provides decent healing. She provides big buffs to your hero and when you unlock iconic weapons her iconic weapon boost uh basically permanently increases your the 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 uh, attack speed accuracy uh, all kinds of stats for your most powerful hero so she is an ss tier odin 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 is he is not a carry or anything but i'd argue he no, I wouldn't say he's SS in terms of early... Uh, he's very close. He's very close. He is definitely SS tier in, like, mid-game and late-game. Uh, no, no, I can't, I can't. I'm, done here. I'm not going to say he's as valuable as Western Queen. Uh, because in early game, you're going to have huge deficits, which means the enemies will have huge stat uh, advantages over you, and he sometimes just ends up dying because... He's a very he's a very fragile tank, but he is so good. He buffs your allies' attack speed with his Raven Guardians. He can prevent his uh, the enemy team from using their ultimate. He is a godsend in PvP, um, and later on he's a godsend everywhere. Uh, and he also makes some units work, which I will go into very soon. Anyways. Let's go to Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel is... Uh, she's okay. She's not... She, she's a mage, but she's not really that big of a damage dealer. I'll put her in pretty high beat here. She... Because she does help to keep your team alive. Um, 
she gives us she gives a uh, what do you say it's like a water curtain which decreases damage onto your team um, and she can you know reduce enemies attack speed give your team some good shielding so yeah she's pretty good I'd say Apollo 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 is just Apollo Apollo is early game wise he is probably the best carry in the game actually uh, yeah, I'm going to put him in SS tier. Um, I'm not going to put her above Western Queen, because Western Queen is so versatile. She works for all carries, right? But Apollo is... is uh, He is... Um, how do I put this? Okay, so... If, you know... If the other DPSs and Mythic Heroes were, like, little dudes with rocket launchers, Apollo would be a fucking tank, okay? Like, not only does he deal damage, but he is damn near unkillable. He has infinite shielding, infinite um, defense increases. He is so tough to put down. He will just live and destroy the whole team on his own. He is exactly what a carry should be. Self-reliant, he doesn't rely on his allies. He just goes ham on the enemies and he lasts for a long time, he deals a lot of damage. SS tier. Aphrodite. Aphrodite, she got a buff um, recently, but she's still not that good. I'm gonna put her in C tier. She does healing, she does um, shielding, but she's not the best shielder, she's not the best healer, she's just not the best at anything. Yeah, nah, nah, yeah, nah. I don't like her. Persephone, Persephone, later game I've seen her do some big numbers, okay, to be fair, but early game she's probably going to be a C tier, she's a, she deals damage and she also does help keep your team alive with resistances, I'm going to put her in B tier, just in, like, you can like use her without building her, right, just for that passive which decreases the physical damage taken, put her D B tier above like above Aphrodite, but you should not be building her as your main DPS. She is not, you know, main DPS material early on. Right, Izanami. Izanami, I'm going to put her in early game. In terms of early game only, yeah, because I'm ranking only by early game, right? Later on, she does fall off. But early game, I'm going to put her in a solid S tier, or a S tier. She is really good at keeping herself alive and deals a lot of he, she, uh, she, she's good at dealing, like, spread damage. She does a lot of damage cumulatively, but single target-wise, eh, not really, but to the entire team, yeah, yeah. And the thing about her is she is, uh, very good at keeping herself alive, just like Apollo. Not as good as Apollo is at keeping herself alive, and she doesn't deal as much damage either. She's kind of like... You know, but she's still good. She's still good in early game. Hades. Okay. Uh, Hades does his job well. He's a tank. Um, he has this execution skill as his ultimate, which basically deals a bunch of damage. But he doesn't. He's like a tank. He's not damage. He's not. Mar he's no Marduk. But it basically can execute if the target's health is low. This is mainly useful late game. He's still okay in early game, right? He he does his job, he tanks, he can summon a hellhound to help him. Mm, he's just he's just okay. Nothing really else to say. I'm gonna put him under Gabriel, which is not as good as Gabriel. Medusa. Medusa late game campaign is godsend. Early game, she's still I'd still put her pretty well. Uh unlike someone like Suzanu, like you don't need to get her to a specific upgrade level to make her useful. She's just an overall good... I'm going to put her in S tier, actually. Uh, a little bit below Yuzanami. In PvP, she is... She's okay, right? Um, PvE, she's really good. She can stun the allies. Even if you're using, like, an Apollo or something as your main character, you can always stuff in a Medusa. And, and if she gets her ultimate off, she can still help your team a bunch. She doesn't have to be the main damage dealer, but she still... She, she could be. Right. She doesn't have to be. Very versatile. 
Anubis. Anubis. Anubis is eh. He he's just meh. He's he's okay. He, he summons a bunch of stuff early game. I guess he's good at distracting stuff with his mummies. Late game he he's just mid right. He's not he's not he's no Thor. Don't get me wrong. But he's just not that good. Yeah, nothing really jumps out to me. It's just not that good. He summons a bunch of zombies or mummies. So he's pretty good for boss fights. He can distract boss blows with his mummies. That's about it for him. PvP wise, he's mid. PvE wise, he's mid. He's just mid. Hella. Um. Yeah, she does a hell of a, do a job healing. Oh, sorry, that was really bad. Oh, uh, Hella, I'm gonna put her... I'm gonna put her at the top of A tier. Not S tier yet. Actually, because the fact that she relies on lifesteal to heal, or a big part of her healing is lifesteal, I'm going to put her in S tier. That is very beneficial to many carries. Uh, so Hella basically is a healer, really good healer, that recovers health. Yeah, no way, right? A healer recovers health. Whew, unheard of. But the way she recovers health is by lifesteal. Uh, she can also boost her ally's health recovery, which means she also works well with other healers, just in case you want two healers for whatever reason. She's just good. She has a circle, basically, reading uh, skill at the beginning of the battle, which reduces damage. She can keep your carry like Apollo or something long enough to get them going because at the beginning of the battle uh, if you're at too high a deficit Apollo can just die immediately and you don't want that so yeah she's a pretty good way to prevent that Faust Faust early game I put him high A tier the thing about Faust is he's usable with no investment whatsoever he can be as a com he can be a kamikaze suicide bomber and he'll work just fine. So for early game, all you need to know is that when he dies, he releases his ultimate. And when he releases his ultimate, he goes boom. And he also at the beginning of his battle, like Suzanu teleports to the hero that's facing him, right? But he actually swaps. So if there's like a really squishy high damage uh, unit uh, in the enemy team, you can use Faust to bring them over to your side and have your carry eradicate them immediately. So, yeah, I'm putting him in high A tier. Nephthys, Nephthys is... She's like... thing. interesting thing about Nephthys is she can kind of be like a healer, right? She's like a pseudo-healer, pseudo-damage healer. She's okay, right? Uh, she's very squishy on her own. I'm gonna put her a little above Anubis. But you can run water runes on her because water runes simultaneously increases her healing capabilities and her damage because her main source of damage, which is her skill number four, uh, actually scales off healing. So yeah, the more healing she does, the more damage the skill will do. It's actually not her ultimate that deals most damage. She can actually nuke with the skill because it can stack. It says selects two allies with the lowest health and recovers their health with an amount equal to 180% of her attack, and an equivalent amount of damage will also be dealt to enemies near the targets. And at skill level 4, this increases to 3, but that's not relevant to you. All you need to know is that if the two allies are grouped together, this damage will stack. So it'll proc twice. So yeah. Loki. Loki is low-key a pretty good deep. Okay, I'll stop with these really bad jokes. Loki is really good as an early game DPS. Um, I faced him, and he's caused me my fair share of grief. He's not as good as Apollo. I don't know. I think he's better than he's an army, honestly. Um, he basically creates a bunch of clones. These clones are not weak either, alright? These clones inherit 100% of his attributes, so that's literally another Loki, right? 100% of his attack, 100% of his health, 100% of his defense. Thing is, they can't use his active skills or ultimate. That'd be way too broken. So yeah, they're like auto-attacking Lokis. And he can create multiple 
these. So the reason um, I'm not putting him any higher is because he has a hard counter in Odin. Odin, not only is he Luminarch, it's not really relevant because Odin's not damage dealer, but Odin can reduce any enemy's dodge to zero, and Loki relies on dodges to create his clones. So if he's facing an Odin, that means he will not make as many clones as he would before. So on defense, I do not recommend Loki at all. On offense, I think Loki's a very great tool in your arsenal to use, and a pretty great carry as well. Morrigan. Morrigan is... Hold on, where did she go? Not Dionysus. She is the best in the game for early game. Doesn't matter PvP or PvE, Morrigan will keep your carry alive for 8 seconds after they're supposed to die. That is so busted. And the thing is, the, that's not even the most busted thing about her, it's because how broken her skill is, okay? It says here, after 8 seconds, the hero dies after the target time expires, alright? So basically, when your hero is supposed to die, instead, they'll go invincible for 8 seconds. While this is significant, sometimes it's not significant enough. So what really breaks her is the fact that this skill is broken. If your hero has some innate healing, okay, they will not die. Let's say I'm using an Izanami, okay? Izanami takes lethal damage, and Meat Fate is activated. So for 8 seconds, she gains temporary immunity. She's supposed to die after those 8 seconds, but after attacking the ally, uh, the enemies, uh, she regenerates to her max health. She will not die. That's... So unbelievably busted. Moreover, this unit also gains up to 30% extra attack. So that is just busted. Moreover, Morgan herself, she doesn't do that much, but she's pretty tough to kill. She's uh, She turns into a raven when she gets low. Finally, she can reduce healing, or no, just, uh, just block all healing, which is pretty good. Alright, so that's Morgan. Kamatoz, she is the newest hero. Uh, many of the earlier game, sorry, early game players probably have her. And are probably wondering how good she is in the grand scheme of things. So on paper, uh, so basically I've consulted with many whales, and basically they're saying that end game wise she is eh, but that is end game. Um, and to me she looks pretty broken. Like I'm not gonna lie. Zero point three seconds. So every second this ticks three times. She deals two hundred percent of her attack to one random enemy. In comparison, Madarasu here, considered the best PvP hero, uh, deals, like, I think it's up to 70% damage per 0 0.5 seconds for, like, 6 or 5 seconds. This is so much more damage than her ultimate. Like, so much. Like, 3 times up. Like, 3 times her ultimate, considering she doesn't get ramped up. So... Yeah, that's that's her ultimate for you, and moreover, she has a bunch of healing, and she scales, uh, sorry, she doesn't scale, uh, she basically gets better with Frighten, which is very situational, the only other hero that applies Frighten is Nobunaga, so they might have some pretty good synergy, but she basically, I think she can keep herself alive decently well. So the main gripe I have against her is while she has tons and tons of self-healing, and you'd think, and she has tons and tons of damage, she has so much damage, uh, she actually um, doesn't really have any defense. Like, she is really weak in terms of pure defense. Like, let me put it this way. Someone like Apollo not only can not only heal with his iconic weapon skill, uh, but he can also, you know, provide most shields so he doesn't get, you know, one shot it or something. This girl can heal just fine, but she is so fragile that she might just get one tapped or she might get bursted down before she has a chance to recover all that health. So yeah, I don't even think she's on here. She is the newest hero. 
Oh, uh, yeah. So, if I were to rank her, though, I'd probably put her somewhere in the A tier. I'd say she's pretty good, but she's not incredible. Hercules. Hercules is a walking... He's like Thor. I'd say he's a little bit better. I'll put him in C tier, because he's looking a little lonely. He's like a better Thor, I guess. Both of them have this feature where if you attack them, they'll attack you back. And both of them are also really bad. So, yeah. Lubu. Oh, Lubu. Lubu. Where is Lubu? Uh, first off, I want to say, this guy's design is so cool. Alright, this guy has the coolest design I've ever seen. That being said, he's, he's straight dog shit. Um... He doesn't get better. Uh, put him seat here. It'd be a disgrace to put him Thor. But he's just not good as a carry. Deal single target damage. So basically, on paper, uh, his ultimate looks like it's like a single target killer move, right? It's really not. So the thing about dealing damage many times. So, uh, defense, right? The defense stat procs each time he does this damage. So let's say defense removes maybe 20% damage per strike. So if he's doing 12 times 70%, uh, the damage is actually reduced 12 times 50%, which is 600% uh, damage. As opposed to this, someone like Marduk, okay, Marduk, he does all this damage in one blow. So defense only procs once. So at his max, I think he does 1600%, uh, and that will be reduced to 1550%, while this guy will be reduced to 600% from like probably like 800% or something like that. So defense procs every time he strikes, and he strikes twice, 12 times, so defense actually procs 12 times, so he does not do as much damage as you think. And he also has very little AoE, he doesn't do AoEs, just deal single target damage, that's the reason he's so bad. Alright, if some of these skills affected more than one person, he'd actually be a pretty good DPS, but as it stands, nah. GNM, GNM early game, very good. Um, interesting thing about them, they actually switch, okay? So, the, uh, um, they start off as, I think, the girl, um, and once they release their ultimate, uh, they will transform into the guy. And they both have different abilities. I recommend you read up on them if you want to use uh, GNM. GMM falls off a little later, but their iconic weapon, 600, uh, as I've read, gives them a massive boost. So there is still hope for them yet. And the interesting thing here is that... Uh, their ultimate, they can only use it once per battle, but uh, after they use it, if they reach full energy, instead of using another ultimate, uh, they just recover HP. So, I guess that's not horrible. But yeah, they're good at bursting. Their ultimate deals a lot of burst. So, but they're, it's a one-time use, so, you know, pros and cons. Putting them in S tier, they have their own little sus sustain. They have bursty kit, which is good for early game. So yeah, Joan of Arc, um, yeah, I'm putting her at the top seat here, she's just not good. She, uh, tries to be a, she, as a support, she's not really a support, she is a tank, but she's not that good at tanking, and all her skills are mid, none of them are very mid, her ultimate's pretty mid, nothing much to say. Cleopatra, early game, I think she is not usable as a DPS straight up. Later game, later campaign, some veterans to use her. Uh, she deals pretty good consistent damage. There's snakes and poison. Takes a bit to charge up her poison. Uh, but an early game, yeah, she... I put her above Lubu. She, she can deal pretty well, like with many enemies, while Lubu is just like single target. But she's she's just not that good. Uh, Cassandra, Cassandra, Cassandra on the other hand, 
She's one of what I call the big three, along with Hela. No, sorry, the big four. Which are like the big four healers. Um, God, this is like, okay. Cassandra, I'm going to put her near, close to Hela, where Hela is. But she basically uh, takes very little investment to use. Once she dies, she actually, uh, right here, the passive, uh, she actually heals, turns into an angel and heals all hazards for 12 seconds. So even if she's like, you don't put anything into her, you can just plop her in a team. Even if she dies early, because, you know, you didn't uh, invest stuff into her, she'll still heal your team for 12 seconds. And she also reduces damage taken to all allies, which is really good. And she's just a really good healer. That's all there is to say about her. All right, this is getting kind of long. I'll go a little quicker. So Archimedes paired up with Odin. He's insane. So how this works is basically... Um, uh, basically, Odin provides some shielding. Uh, so Odin's skill, Raven Guardians, provides shielding for every attack you do. So Archimedes' whole thing is dealing very low damage with his attacks, but attacking super fast, alright? He attacks super fast, but he... Um, right here, he... Yeah, it says here it's fast, but it deals very little damage. And with his ultimate is where he really shines with Odin, uh, helping him. So Odin also provides energy with him every time you attack. Since he attacks super fast, he ends up regenerating energy extremely quickly. So with his ultimate, his auto attack now targets two units to deal 35% damage per hit. So that's lower than his 75%. But Odin also adds 60% of Odin's attack. So he also provides a small attack boost. And it's not that small considering how, attack, how fast he attacks. But basically with this super fast attack, his... 300% increased attack speed. Um, he can basically ult multiple times in a row by restoring so much energy from Odin. So he can ultimate once and then gain enough energy to ult again and then gain en enough energy to ult again and he just becomes a killing machine. Well, without o Odin though, he's kind of mid. So only use him with Odin. Uh, I suggest you uh, look up guides on how to use him because you can't just use him any way you want. You have to put in frontline, usually Odin's frontline as well, because you need to make sure he gets that buff from Odin, or else he will not work. Leonidas. Leonidas is just a good overall tanker, takes a bunch of damage. Not really much to say. I'll put him bottom of A tier. Yeah, he just frontal face tanker. See, his frontal damage taking is reduced by 50%. So, he's just a good old face tanker, right? You need someone to take the hits, he'll take them real well. Moreover, he has some, like, he has some support as well, right? But he's mostly just there to face tank as much damage as possible, and she's probably the best at it in the entire game. This guy, Yi Sun Shin. So, this guy is going... Uh, above Athena, I put him here. Alright, so pretty much um, this guy, he uh, tanks, he boosts allies' defense and tenacity, which is tenacity is basically decreases their time being controlled by stuns or whatever. Uh, and he also debuffs allies. He's just a really good tank, he can heal allies. Just a really good overall tank, right? He's very well-rounded, can take a pretty good amount of damage, he can heal his allies, he can debuff his uh, enemies, and he can also, you know, uh, he can also boost allies' defense and stuff like that. He's, so he's just, he's just good. Aladdin, Aladdin, I, I don't really care for this guy. I, he, I don't even want to talk about him. I, I don't, I'm not too familiar with what he does. I know he's never used, and for good reason, because I've never seen him be good once. Except in Clash of Heroes, but PvP, PvE, no. Murasaki, Murasaki is probably going to be B tier. Uh, she is like a nuker, just like Zeus. Um, but she does more damage than Zeus, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, percentage damage, like the one that Zeus does, isn't as significant early game. She does a lot of damage. She 
chance and restores energy if it's uh if it's interrupted. She's just she's just uh your standard nuker fragile, but once you get her to ult and she's still alive at that point, then you've pretty much won. Naghanya, my personal favorite and one of the quote unquote big four healers. And so basically, she basically, I'd say, honestly, she's probably the best at keeping your team alive. Because the uh, thing about her is this, she is the only healer with this feature, but not only does she do a lot of healing, right? But also, when she overheals, she converts the excess healing into shields. So if you have extra health, if you're already at max health, she immediately just converts it into shields. So that basically increases your survivability of your team by a ton. And yeah, her healing is just really, really good. But that's all she really does. All she does is healing. And But she's really damn good at it, so nothing to hate on her about that. Okay, so pretty controversial, but I'm putting this girl above Apollo. So in terms of early game PvP, she is a monster. Paired with Morgan, she is an absolute monster. She obliterates Apollo easily early game. She is, if you're worried about Apollo, because Apollo's going to be used by like everyone early game, use this. Uh, by the way, she is nowhere near as Apollo later on. Um, I wouldn't say, uh, right, he, she does get worse later on. But early game, she obliterates everyone. She does the so high damage. Like she's also Verdian, and Verdian has a faction advantage against Luminarchs like Apollo. But she does so much damage. And think about her. You'll look at her and you'll figure out that she looks really fragile, and she is. But the thing is, this skill. This is the most annoying passive in the game, and probably one of the best passives in the game. Tamamo is immune to the next incoming attack and teleports to a random position. This effect can be triggered once every 6 seconds, up to once every 3 seconds. So basically, every 3 seconds, when you hit her, she doesn't take any damage, or so basically it misses. Guaranteed miss every 3 seconds. So not only, not only will your damage miss her, your effects will as well. Moreover, she teleports away. So for melee heroes like Apollo, this is a nightmare. So I've had times where I had a whole full health Apollo with like a 5% HP Tomomo, and she would just kill him easily because he attacks him, okay, she teleports away, and then he runs to him. By this time, three seconds have already passed, okay, so he tries to attack her again. She teleports away again, and then by the time he runs to her to attack her one more time, she already has her three seconds up one more time, and then... She just kills him. So yeah, really annoying to deal with. Very annoying paired with Morgan. Gives her a second life. Anyways, highly recommended for PvP. I don't know about PvE though, but probably the best. I'm not going to put her, him, her above Apollo, because Apollo is just so good in everything. PvE, PvP. But if you want to counter him, okay, against everything else, let me put it like this. Against everything else, Tomomo would probably be like an S tier. Against like Apollo, which is the top DPS by far, she is like out of the world, out of this world. So yeah, SS tier, Idun, finally the last of my big four healers. Uh, I'd probably put her last, but that's, they're very close, all right. They're very, all four of them are very good healers. Idun, uh, she has less healing than someone like Naga Kanya, but in exchange, she restores energy. So if you have a team composition which is relies on like your main carry getting a bunch of energy, releasing the ultimate quickly, Idun's probably gonna be better. But if you have like a you know more regular team, uh, these three might be better choices. Gaia, Gaia. Unfortunately, he is, she's just not good. She does absolutely nothing uh, when she just lives. She lives for a while, though. She's tough to take down. In defense, PvP, I guess you could use her because she's so tough to kill. But 
while she's alive, she does absolutely nothing. Oberon, Oberon, just overall, like, what a good DPS is. Uh, he's a fighter, and uh, he's tough to explain. I don't have the most experience with him, but he just does damage, he debuffs, he, he has good survivability, and he is everything you need in a fighter. I'm actually going to put him, no, I'm going to put him near the healers, I'd say he's as good as, put him above GMM. Flora, Flora, later game, she gets better, I guess, early game, nah, she's a nuker, she's fragile, you know the drill, nothing really significant about her. Poseidon. Poseidon's great at grouping. I'm going to put him in A tier. A tier, A tier, yeah. Uh, he's great at grouping units. I wouldn't put him above Apollo, uh, Athena. You know, now that I think about it, Athena is actually much better than I give her credit for. I'm going to put her above the healers just because um, her shielding is invaluable. Uh, I think this looks pretty decent, though. Uh, Susan is also better than I give her him credit for even though he's not as good with that as 181 still like good really good as an assassin All right i'll put him here i think that looks fair anyways so poseidon poseidon basically his main shtick is not only he can live for a while but his main thing is he can pile people up so he's great for like someone like nephthys right nephthys if you have two allies enemies grouped up together, allies grouped up together, um, she can use her fourth skill and deal a lot of damage in that concentrated area. Some like Flora, right, benefits off a lot because her ultimate is 350% damage in a, to a small area, which can stack, okay? So if you have everyone in a small area, this will stack multiple times and deal more damage. So he can group people up together, make for good synergies, and overall pretty okay tank. Freya, Freya's just busted, um, she's, I'll put her here for now, yeah, I'll put her here, um, Freya basically, um, gives your allies a huge attack speed boost at the beginning of the battle, she is kind of a jack of all trades, DPS, she can deal, she's like a sub DPS, she deals additional damage, she probably shouldn't be your main DPS, um, just because she, uh, she randomly attacks units, right? That's her, like, biggest downside. Her auto attacks are random, so not as consistent as a main DPS, but she does hella damage with her ultimate. She has a very strong, uh, ally attack boost. If you're using fighters, if you're using mages, then maybe Freya's not for you, but if you're using fighters and tanks, this is very, very powerful, and she can also, she's also good at bossing, she does very well against bosses, because, you know, her main gripe, which is she targets one random enemy per auto attack, uh, that is not an issue with bosses, where there's only one boss to worry about. Chiron, Chiron, later he gets really good early, I think he's still okay, he's, oh, okay, here's the thing, I'm gonna actually put him in, like, B tier, lower B tier, because he does not synergize with Morgan at all. He does not work the Morgan. So, Soul of Sagittarius, her, his ultimate, uh, so basically what he does, he does very heavy auto attack damage, but his auto attacks are slower, and auto attacks are his, like, biggest source of damage, and his ultimate basically creates a clone of him, and when he dies, uh, he becomes his clone. He teleports where his clone is and replaces him. And this does not work well with Morgan's meet fate skill. So, yeah. Also, his clone's temporary. Titania, honestly, you're never gonna see her. Just don't use her. That's all there is to say. I've ne I don't think I've ever seen a Titania in PvP. I'm not gonna lie. Just. She, I wouldn't say she's as bad as Thor. I just, I don't really know what she does. He, uh, yeah, just pretend she doesn't exist. And I think that's it, because I said is a UR. 
Alright, that was definitely a mouthful. I'm gonna have to get a drink of water after this. Um, yeah, that is my overall early game tier list. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys had success following this. And, yeah, take especially take this one with a grain of salt, because you know, many players don't like her for some reason. I don't know why, but she is a monster. You know what, let me... I can, like, go show you guys how good she is right now. God, what is this lag? Sheesh. Huh? That, that was pretty crazy. Um, you know, I was gonna show you guys something, but looks like the game's not appreciating that, so... Yeah, never mind, but I was gonna show you some on my friends list, the stupidly powerful Tamamo, which is obliterate my whole team on, like, her own. But you guys won't be seeing that, unfortunately, so, yeah, uh, this is very interesting opinionated tier list, but hopefully it will help you in your early game journey. And as always, thanks for watching.